Welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. Welcome to the Economic Corner where we update you on all the biggest global economic announcements for the day. The first economic update for the day is from Australia. Australia's Conservative Coalition government has declined to agree to a country-level MOU with China on the Belt and Road Initiative. Australia said that the decision to cancel two deals between Victoria State and China on the Belt and Road Initiative was about ensuring consistency in its foreign relations and was not aimed at any country. The Chinese embassy earlier criticized the move by Foreign Minister Maurice Payne to veto two framework agreements signed by Victoria State as provocative and said it would further damage ties with Australia. Payne said that she had received a thousand notifications from the state about deals they had with multiple foreign governments under a new process that gives her veto over such arrangements. And Beijing had been notified of the decision before it was made public on Wednesday evening. She added, Australia was committed to engaging with China and was asking all governments around the world to respect the government's decision-making authority. Meanwhile, diplomatic relations between Australia and China have worsened since Canberra called for an international inquiry into the origins of the coronavirus, prompting trade reprisals from Beijing. Payne is visiting New Zealand, where she will meet her counterpart, Nenea Muhata. Muhata on Monday said New Zealand did not support the Five Eyes Security Alliance, which also includes Australia, Britain, Canada and the United States. Speaking out on the human rights issues, the comments were widely interpreted as referring to Five Eyes joint statements, criticizing China. Payne said that, quote unquote, Australia will continue to emphasize the vital nature of the Five Eyes in security and intelligence. And on the other hand, the EU and India are in talks to build joint infrastructure projects around the world in the latest attempt to compete with China's Belt and Road Initiative. The plan is described as a connectivity partnership in sectors including energy, digital and transport. India and the EU are expected to unveil the initiative at a virtual summit on the 8th of May. And now moving on, tensions between Israel and Syria are increasing. The Israeli military said that a missile was launched from Syria, struck Israel's Negev desert region, setting off air raid sirens near the country's top secret nuclear reactor. In response, it said it struck the missile launcher and other targets in neighboring Syria. The incident, marking the most serious violence between Israel and Syria in recent years, pointed to likely Iranian involvement. Iran, which maintains troops and priorities in Syria, has accused Israel of a series of attacks on its nuclear facilities, including a recent fire at its Natanz nuclear facility, and the country has vowed revenge. Next up is good news as the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, increased its output forecast for advanced economies. The IMF has recently released its World Economic Outlook report and has revised the gross domestic product, or the GDP of America and other advanced economies. A quick look at low-income economies doesn't reveal similar upgrades, but the news is still good because low-income economies have a hard time growing without growth in advanced economies. A faster and stronger recovery in the developed world is good for the global economy. And now, news from Canada. Canada has become the first G7 country to scale back the monetary policy support measures introduced around the world when the coronavirus pandemic first struck early last year. The Bank of Canada released its monetary policy report for April of 2021. 
The key messages from the report are the Canadian economy showed impressive resilience during the second wave of the pandemic. And estimates of growth in the first quarter have been revised up significantly. Nevertheless, many Canadians remain out of work, particularly low-wage workers, young people and women. Although recent job numbers have been encouraging, it may take considerable time for overall employment to recover. The economic impact of the third wave is expected to be material but temporary, without the adaption seen in the second wave and the increasing number of people vaccinated. The effects of the third wave would be most severe and long-lasting. In the near term, inflation is expected to rise temporarily to around the top of one of the 1-3% to inflation control target range, largely reflecting base year effects and gasoline price dynamics. The bank tends to look through such as temporary movements. GDP growth is revised up by 2.5 percentage points in 2021, about 6.5%. The Bank of Canada has also cut its monthly bond buying by a quarter and brought forward its projections for when it will meet its inflation target, citing a brightening economic outlook despite the temporary setback from an upsurge in COVID-19 infections. The bank will reduce its net purchases of government debt by $1 billion Canadian dollars per week to $3 billion Canadian dollars. And from the Economic Data Announcement Front, National Australia Bank or NAB Quarterly Business Survey for March 2021 was released. The Quarter 1 Business Survey reported further not able business sector improvement. Business conditions and confidence strengthened in the quarter, with both now at plus 17 index points, well above their long-run averages. All the sub-indices of business conditions improved substantially. That is, profitability, trading and employment are now well into expansionary territory. According to Alan Oster, NAB Group Chief Economist, the survey suggests that the economy recovery will further build momentum in 2021. Now updates from the pandemic recovery phase the number of new COVID-19 cases in India is seeing a drastic rise. Japanese city of Osaka has asked the national government to declare a new state of emergency. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has asked American businesses to offer paid time off for employees to get vaccinated. Now for the upcoming economic events for the day. The U.S.-led climate summit starts today and Xi Jinping will attend the climate summit today, holstering hopes of cooperation between the world's two largest greenhouse gas emitters, despite tensions between Beijing and Washington. And Britain's international trade. Secretary will meet the August Australian trade minister, Dan Tihan to discuss a post-Brexit trade deal. And European Central Bank will also release its monetary policy statement today and will be keenly watched out by the markets. And next up, well, that is all for now. Keep watching Calkine TV as we bring you the latest news and trending market updates live from Sydney. This is Holly Shields signing off.